if the dull substance of my flesh or thought injurious distance should not stop my way for then despite of space i would be brought from limits far remote where thou dost stay no matter then although my foot did stand upon the farthest earth from thee for nimble thought can jump both sea and land as soon as think the place where he would be but ugh, thought kills me that i am not thought to leap large lengths of miles when thou art gone but that so much of earth and water wrought i must attend time's leisure with my moan receiving naught by elements so slow but heavy tears badges of either's woe uh yeah so that was sonnet number 44 um that's this this is a really cool one um so i like the thematic turn that the sonnets have taken in the past couple um uh and this one i I like picturing how fast a thought moves, and I was thinking about, you know, uh, the speed of thought and that um, uh, metaphor that Shakespeare uses in this. And it's kind of funny because it's like he, it would be sorcery to Shakespeare at the time to think of what we have right now with, you know, smartphones and Facebook and Twitter and like instant communication and instant travel in that sense. Um, like like with video chat you can just boom pull someone's and then, and then their face is right there and you can just talk to them you know that's essentially what he's talking about as if it's you know this this wishful thinking of oh i wish i could have this thing it's like well we kind of have it now um but ironically um it, it hasn't solved the problem right the grass is greener still you know it's it's he's wistfully wishing that you know oh if only i was thought and i could just tr instantly be where you were then everything would be better and it's like well no everything's not better like that's what we have today and people are still lonely and people are still isolated and it all still it, it's all still there in some cases it's worse like you know i feel like we have this like old-fashioned you know idea in our heads of you know 60 years ago and you'd say hi to the milkman on your way you're you're walking down your driveway to get the mail and you like that doesn't happen anymore people it's it's, it's happening less i should say i mean I'm sure, maybe there are parts in the country or other parts in the world where that still kind of happens but you don't see it anymore everyone's ooh, screens glued to the screens and you know that iron the irony of the instant communication device being what Shakespeare describes in this sonnet and he's thinking wistfully that oh that'll solve all the problems with communication it's like no it really didn't so uh you know a little depressing in that thought but it's it's um really kind of interesting to think that like he was using this metaphor to you know that, that there was no no tangible corollary to like this idea that you could you know yeah I, I wish i was as fast as a thought and here we are so that's uh it was uh yeah, it was kind of um uh sobering <laughs> to have that you know to go down that line of thought of like oh man we need to be better about communicating as people and being appreciating the tools that we have so um so yeah th this is a, a fun and thought-provoking one so uh next week is the 21st so i th there'll be sonnet 45 and then i'll do um it's from uh two gents of verona which i think i know which one i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna do a prose bit there's a really funny little monologue that um i was i was watching uh more of the bbc uh version that you can watch on amazon um on amazon video um it's, i think it's from the 80s it's like cringe-worthy production value with like the fabio hair and um but i just just passed the part in the in that play where there's this really funny monologue with this kind of fool kind of character who uh 
has a dog named Crab, and he tells this little story, um, and he like acts out little things with like his shoe. This shoe is my mom. This shoe is my dad. And that's the dog. And it's this little funny bit. And it's like, uh, I feel like this. I feel like Two Gentlemen and Rona is this play that not many people will see. And it's. I mean, it's it's not the greatest Shakespeare. Certainly, it's very it's very clearly early Shakespeare. And you can you can see you can you know I'm watching this play and it's you can see bits where there's like uh, you know a verbal duel between two guys vying for the affections of a woman and it you can very clearly see like oh Shakespeare's trying his hand at verbal uh, you know sword fighting essentially and kind of flexing different muscles as a writer and. Uh, uh, it's really cool to see the, the growth that is starting. Um, and uh, so, you know, certainly it's a flawed play. Certainly it's got its share of problems with it, but uh, there's a lot of really great humor in it. And it's kind of, it's endearing in its imperfection. So uh, yeah, I think that, I think I'll be doing that because I do a lot of, you know, all the sonnets are in verse. So it'll be fun to do a little Shakespearean prose and uh, a little uh, more, uh, not slapstick, but like kind of just silly comedy. Um, but it's, it, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's really funny. So I'm looking forward to that. So I think I might do that. I'll, um, you know, I'm going to watch more of the BBC one and then I've got an RSC uh, filmed version of a, of a much more, I think it's like only from five or six years ago. There was a staged play that was filmed that I'm going to watch because I think I'll like that better because man, I hate the production values of this like 80s. Uh, it might even be late 70s. Um, uh, BBC version, but you know, the, I mean, the acting's great, but it's like, man, I just wish these people didn't wear the costumes they were wearing. Um, so yeah, Sonnet 44 uh, was fun. Sonnet 45 next week, and then two gents. 